Hi, and welcome back to my uh, CPU build. So here's the circuit roughly as we left it at the end of the last video. I've made a few changes. I've, uh, I've added the power and some uh, capacitors to, uh, to, to this large breadboard we're going to be building the pipeline on. I've also um, switched the LEDs here to one of the bar graph LEDs and, uh, and used one of the green ones. Now this is because I'm trying to create some standardization on the color of the LEDs I'm using so red will be registers and, and green will be the results of buses so um, when we've got a, a larger circuit with a lot more going on it's uh, hopefully going to make it slightly easier to trace things around but anyway it's uh, it's time to look at the uh, instruction registers in the, uh, the the next three pipeline steps so I'm going to move this out the way for now. This is actually quite curious in that the uh, clock quite often uh, of a program counter still counts quite a stably sometimes even with the uh, wire detached. So the floating input on the uh, HCT count chip is uh, obviously getting something off the uh, some variations in the power rail or something, but uh, I don't think that's anything for us to worry about. Anyway, so here we have our fetch stage, and what we want to do here is we want to be able to have an additional set of instruction registers all the way up our, our pipeline, which will receive the instructions in sequence. So. Um, an instruction will be, appear here, one cycle, here the next, here the next, and so on. And that way we, uh, we have the, the data we need in each of the pipeline steps. Now at the moment I'm only envisaging um, an 8-bit instruction. There will be a, a video later where I, I talk a little bit more about the, the compromises involved in that. But uh, it's, it's good to keep things simple. But uh, we need to think about how we're going to do this. I do like the simplicity of, uh, of putting these uh, dip LEDs in instead of wiring up uh, eight separate LEDs. I don't like the uh, extra two we get, but uh, that's a small price to pay. Okay, so it did occur to me when I first started to, to think about this that what we're effectively uh, looking at is a uh, is a shift register where these are the bits getting shifted in and then they will uh, gradually move up here each time we uh, we clock the pipeline. So the the first thing I thought to do was to uh, to look at some of the shift registers that are available. So this is the 74LS 164 and uh, you this could work. We have eight outputs We've got these two inputs, although they're all together, so we could just bring one of those low. And if we put eight of these chips in a row and clocked the uh, eight bits of our instruction into here, we could then uh, pull off for the second pipeline stage the eight separate outputs at QA and then for the next stage, the eight separate outputs at QB, and then at QC. And if we had nine pipeline stages, that would actually be a pretty damn sensible way of doing it. But, um, but we don't, so the eight chips that, that this would result in is perhaps a little bit of a waste. But it did give me uh, a, a basis to start thinking about the problem. Now this, uh, this diagram obviously shows us what's going on in, inside. We've got eight separate clocked latch registers and each cycle the, the next latch takes the output from the previous one. So that does give me an idea about how we could uh, go about solving this problem. So if we look back at the uh, 574 chip that we've uh, we used in the address registers, this um, 
actually has eight very similar latches, but these ones are in parallel rather than in series. But uh, it occurs to me that we could we could put one of these in each of the, the steps of the pipeline and use them to store and progress our instruction registers. So if we come back and uh, look at what we have here, we would have one of these at each step. Now, there's quite a lot of wiring involved in this. I'm going to uh, fast forward wiring up all of the outputs here. Okay, so I've wired the outputs of each stage into the inputs of the next stage. So that's the, uh, the, the main uh, data moving up. We've got to uh, look at the, the other lines that need to be hooked up now. If we go back to the, uh, the pinout diagram, so okay, VCC and ground are in the opposite corners. Okay. Now, output enable is active low, so we're going to want these outputting all the time. Copy line. Now, we're going to be able to want that to run those all off the same clock signal, so we should probably tie them all together. You should probably realize at this point that I spent quite a lot of time last night cutting wires to length. Okay, and let's uh, pull in a clock signal from there. I'm going to need to connect across from the outputs to the LEDs so we can see them. Now, I've put these LEDs in the opposite way around because the outputs are up here and it'll be a, a lot easier to run wires across the top. Um, so I'm going to turn this one round as well. Okay, so now what I need to do is bring the data from the, uh, the, the latches across to the LEDs, and I'm going to do the same down here so in the fetch unit so we can uh, um, maintain the pattern and, uh, and keep everything uh, logical. Okay, so now we can uh, actually start to uh, to set up the next pipeline step and start to uh, get an idea of this circuit's work. Now with all of these um, data lines set up, it's um, in theory we've actually got our, our data moving up here, but obviously we can't see it at the moment. That's promising. Okay, so we can actually give that a little bit of a test. Now, if you remember, I did program a very simple pattern into the bottom of this ROM chip, the bottom uh, 16 bytes. So here we are. So just this least significant bit is set here, and then we clock onto the next one, and the next bit is set, but this here has the least significant bit set, so the value here has moved up to here. So if we continue to clock, we see this is uh, this is one entry behind this one, which is exactly what we wanted.
Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to continue up and fill in the um, the wires to the LEDs at the, the next two stages. Okay, so that is all the wiring done. Okay, let's uh, give that again a try again with the uh, data at the very bottom. Okay, so this is uh, this is working brilliantly. I'm very pleased with this. This is um, this is one of those things where I've been imagining what this board would look like for a a while. Now I am aware of when I was looking at the latches for the address registers. I did say I was worried about the idea of doing exactly what we've done here and taking the output at the exact point in time when uh, we're changing the inputs because of the uh, the, the fact that at the, the, the moment we clock this we could consider the, uh, the output from these latch chips to be indeterminate. However, I'm not actually all that worried about this here because they're exactly the same chips and if you go and look at the internal diagram for the for the latches here there's uh, at least four gates between the inputs and the outputs in, in ignoring all of the inverters and um, when you look into the implementation of those gates it uh, is actually pretty obvious that the uh, the outputs are going to be held at the previous value for the majority of the propagation delay on the chip. So the uh, the inputs will be, if, if these are the same chips being clocked at the exact same time, there isn't really that much worry of the outputs um, not holding for long enough for the next chip to take that value. So um, I'm currently fairly confident that that's, uh, that's going to be okay. Now, I'm in a little bit worried that the um, LEDs down here have, have, have gone very dim. So I'm going to do some uh, experimentations with that before the next video, see if I can understand what's going on there. I don't know if we've just got a, a power transmission issue. I might, uh, I might do some experimentation there. But um, yeah, this is, uh, this is really good. Now the next video we will be looking at how to tell the fetch unit to do something other than the uh, the blind fetch it does at the moment where we'll um, pass a signal from this stage to uh, to say it wants to access memory back to the fetch unit so it can uh, do something other than uh, grab an instruction and uh, we'll talk a bit more then about um, what should happen in the pipeline but uh, I'm very very pleased with this it's very good to, uh, to to see this bit come together I spent an awful long time cutting all these wires and uh, yeah I'm happy that looks uh, fairly neat okay all right um, hope this is interesting to some people and uh, I will uh, look forward to the next video goodbye